everyone, it's Melody with Design by Melody. I'm here with a 9 by 12 layout for you. So I have a process video for you today. And last week I did a 9 by 12 layout. And so I'm going to go ahead and do a layout to go on the back side of that in my album. Now I don't uh, I'm not super particular about what sizes I scrapbook. However, I do try to make sure that whatever I do, I have two of that way I can have one on the front side of the page and one on the back side of the page and not have a bunch of empty pages in my album. Now that does happen periodically and I just fill those with pattern papers, but making a conscious effort this time to actually make sure I have a layout for the back side. And the layout I did last week was of Kaylin's birthday in 2016. And so so this is actually another photo from like that same day or same week and I'm just using it on the back side. I had these papers that I had pulled out with that same layout last week when I was looking for a 9 by 12 page and then I found this SEI perforated paper. So all of these papers actually, I mean this paper that I'm working with that has the sunshine here actually has like perforations between every single pattern, but I don't like the look of the like torn look. So I'm going to actually cut between all of these pieces. And my thought was to use this dotted paper as my background and then layer the different sun rays on the front. However, I didn't really like how busy that was. So I ended up pulling out this other piece. It's like a green and white stripe that I'm probably just never going to use. So I pulled it out and I'm using that. I'm gonna flip it over and use the back side of that, just the white part to be the base for this layout. And this is the photo I'm using. It's actually a five by seven. I am going to trim it down because there's a lot of empty space and with it being only a nine by 12, I've kind of reduced the amount of scrapbooking space I have. So I'm gonna cut out a lot of that white space or dead space in this photo. It's going to probably end up being about a five by four almost, about approximately. Um, it's not a square, so it's not four by four, but it's definitely larger than a four by four. So I'm going to say it's probably a five by four square. And then I'm just going to mat this on some white paper. Now I could not find a big enough piece of white cardstock to mat it on. So I'm just using some copy paper, which is really not ideal for matting photos. But then I'm going to mat it on a piece of this um, blue and white polka dot that I had originally thought I was going to use as my background. Now I fight forever with this glue. So I'm going to skip ahead to the next part of the layout for you. So you don't have to watch me fight with this. You are going to see me fuss back and forth with it throughout the layout. So I'll try to cut out those parts. Um, but like I said, I'm just layering my little photo layer section, whatever you want to call it, on this teal and white polka dot paper. I just thought the color was really pretty. And this is really what determines the color scheme of the rest of the layout. I really didn't have any plans per se for this layout other than the size. The size is really what was driving this because I wanted to make sure that I had a layout to put on the back side of the last layout I did. So I start trimming out these sun rays and they are double sided and there are different patterns on each side of the sun ray. You'll see me kind of flip it back and forth here in a bit. And I'm just kind of cutting out. My original thought was to cut all of them out and then I was going to do like a black dotted line along the sun rays. I end up not doing that because I forgot. I end up doing this layout in two sittings and I just forgot what my plan was. And I'm really not sure. I thought about going back afterwards after I remembered that I wanted to do the dotted like the faux stitching lines with a black pen along the rays. I thought about going back and doing that and then I realized, well, I don't know if that it necessarily needs it. But that's why you see the white gaps between the layer, uh, the sun rays because I was going to do those faux stitching dotted lines just with my black pen. As I'm cutting these out, I'm starting to get a little particular about what colors I'm layering and how far out I'm layering the rays. So as you can see, these rays are not necessarily reaching the edge of the paper, but I am going to make them reach the edge of the paper because the photo is going to be the center of my little like sun area. And it's almost going to be like the rays are coming out of the photo. 
And I kind of skipped over a couple of the colors that just weren't speaking to me. And then I realized that I'm starting to only really pick teals and yellows. So then I make a conscious effort to look for teals and yellows. And in the bottom part of this perforated paper, there are a couple journaling spots on there. But in the bottom part, there's also all these other longer, skinnier rays that are supposed to, I believe, be like hills or the or the the grass, however you want to visualize that. And I'm going to use a couple of those skinny your rays on this um, top part as well. So I've got different colors, different um, shades of the colors of yellow and teal, and then also different widths as well. And there is a gray one right there right now, but I am going to actually flip that over and use the yellow on the opposite side. And I'm kind of alternating the teal and the yellow um, as I'm as I'm going through here and just figuring out exactly how I want to place this the reason I had that on that gray side is because the the angle that the edge was cut at because it was on the opposite side it really is very very short but I'm going to put that up near the top part of where the photo is going to be so it will still reach the edge of my layout in my head I had a hard time kind of conceptualizing this because I am very much a visual person so if it's not how it's going to end up being sometimes I struggle with seeing seeing the end the end version or the end result so I kind of had to start gluing down otherwise I was going to lose like the inspiration because like I said I have a hard time concept conceptualizing things like that sometimes if I can't see it so I have to really make sure I'm making a conscious effort to get things glued down before I lose the inspiration and so you're kind of seeing it start to come together and this again stupid stupid glue was pissing me off I really am not a fan of the ATG I hate how big and bulky it is so I'm not going to purchase one but I also feel like these glue runners that I've had in my stash I've probably refilled this single orange plastic container I don't know 80 times and so there's like little bits of glue caked up all around it and it keeps getting stuck not to mention that the glue the glue refills that I have are probably two or three years old and they've been moved in and out of rooms and all of that so they're probably not in the best condition but I also refuse to throw them away because I can use them but I do only have two left out of that package so I will be done with those soon and I'm just going to buy a whole new a whole new glue um, container thing and the refills just to hopefully not deal with this anymore. And I did do some creative editing to this video because I also kept getting a phone call <laughs> which was another thing that was kind of bothering me. This is probably why I forgot my idea of putting in the faux stitching because I've kept getting this one person literally called me eight times in like a 30 minute time period and um, wouldn't stop calling. And even though I had told them I would call them later, it kept cutting off my video because, and I know there's a way I can fix that setting. I just don't know what it is, but <laughs> they kept calling me. So it kept stopping my video on my iPad when I was trying to record it. So this layout was full of all kinds of problems, not even the layout itself, but just the like environmental issues I had around filling out this layout. So I felt like the sun was kind of floating, which obviously it kind of is being that it's in the sky, but I needed a bit of a horizon line. So I'm taking this uh, manufacturer strip at the top of the paper um, because it's that same teal kind of color scheme and I'm just doing um, a strip of that all the way across and so that kind of helps ground it a bit because you've got the same color across the entire strip and it kind of creates that horizon line. I do have my journaling. I have cut out this journaling square out of the bottom of that SEI paper and then I have also went to my computer and typed up my journaling and I've just done that on some white copy paper. Nothing fancy. It's the same paper that I actually matted my photo with and then I'm going to glue it down here on this um, little journaling strip. I'm looking through the rest of this SEI paper to see if anything else like jumps out at me to see if there's anything else I want to do. And I do decide to go ahead and cut out one of the very last little sun rays that's in that teal color and use it as a bit of a border at the bottom of this page. Now I am really into white backgrounds. I love having a white background. You will probably never see me use any other 
um, solid colored cardstock anywhere as a background in any of my layouts. Now, um, at least I could say that in the last three years or so, and I'm not saying I will never go back and do that, but I have not been using any solid cardstock as backgrounds for layouts because I've really either just been using pattern paper or just be, or I've just been using white cardstock. I just like how clean and crisp a white cardstock background looks. Now, like I said, I will, I have no problem using pattern papers or anything as, as the background for my layout, but I typically don't use, um, colored cardstock as a background. Now this little journaling spot just has a teal grid on it. And so I am going to adhere my journaling on there and do just do a little bit of embellishing. This layout is overall pretty simple. Um, I really like the feature of the sun. And then the title of this layout is you are my sunshine. And so I really like the play on the title with the decoration of the pattern paper in the background. Now this is the same. This is a, a really good style of layout to do if you are trying to use scraps or have a ton of scraps left in a kit um, and maybe not a whole bunch of really large pattern papers using the little bits and scraps of pieces of um, pattern papers that you have to make a bit of a sunshine sun ray motif really works well for all those little bits I have this wood veneer that says so cute with a little star I'm just backing that with a little bit of white paper just so you can't see the busyness of the photo behind it and then I'm going to just layer it on the corner of that paper I mean, on the corner of that photo, not paper. And I think that is just a really cute element to include. Now, I know that wood veneer brings in a different color. However, I think wood veneer and yellow are kind of in the same color tones. And so I'm using that more of as a, more of uh, more of as that doesn't make sense, but such as a yellow, basically. And I'm not too particular about only using certain colors and layouts. That just happened to be how this one worked out. You know, if you've watched for a while that I've got plenty of layouts that are a million different colors and very bright and colorful. And then I also have some that are very monochromatic and don't include a lot of colors. So this one is dual chromatic. Is that how you say it? it's not mono? It's not single, but dual or duo, or I'm going to make up my own words here. Basically, it's two colors, yellow and teal, with white as the neutral, is essentially what I'm using here. I used these little alpha stickers at the bottom, You Are My Sunshine, and I believe these are some Ellie Studio alphas. I have already put up my supplies, so I actually don't know what alphas these are, but I'm pretty sure they're either basic gray or they're Ellie Studio. Actually, I think they're basic gray. I'm pretty positive they're basic gray, actually, um, because I bought a whole bunch of those when it was at Tuesday morning right after they went out of business, and you could still buy, you could still find some of the supplies, and I just really like the size of them. I was going to try to use multiple different font styles, but I couldn't find some that worked well enough, and with it having it being on that like angled piece of paper at the bottom. It looks really funny with it kind of lined up at the top and then lined up at the bottom and they would be in two different, <laughs> one would be slightly angled and one would be straight horizontal across the bottom of the page. So end up using that same font for the entire title. Just going through a couple of the embellishments to see what else I can add. And I really don't add much. I add this teal, um, ticket that says date and I'm going to use some rub-ons here those dry transfer rub-ons that I had actually put on my blog post last week if you missed that go check out the Friday finds blog blog post that I put I talked about these dry transfers that I have like really enjoyed using in scrapbooking they're not really a typical scrapbooking product they're actually uh, for like signs and posters but they work really well and they're actually kind of fun to use on scrapbook layouts. This, this particular pack is actually a little bit old, so I have to kind of keep rubbing to make sure that the entire number transfers, but I just love using them. I think they're fun. And then I'm going to add one little teal heart here that I cut out of um, just a, off of a label. And then I'm going to add a couple of enamel dots. And if you watched my video last Saturday, I have just recently reorganized my enamel dots and you're going to see them in action here. I have them still sitting on my desk actually. And I 
had the, the slightest moment where I thought about adding a pink heart, but I didn't like the fact that it was going to be the only thing pink on this layout. So I end up just doing these sparkly aqua teal enamel dots. And then that finishes out this layout. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Please let me know if you have any questions. And I will be back on Saturday with an exciting announcement for you. All right, guys. Bye.